And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. This is the show where we open up, taste, and review a bottle of wine. And we're going to try tonight. Um, this is one that uh, I want to try a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, but um, I put it off because we we're trying some other wines. And I thought this would be the perfect night to try this one. This is a Tandem. 2016 uh, red wine. This is a French wine uh, from a Gilles, uh, okay, Gilles Trouillet. Uh, <laughs> pardon my French. It's, it's, this is uh, bottled and distributed by Eric Salmon Wines. Uh, not to be confused by my friend Eric Salmon, who's a very good friend of mine. This is a different Eric Salmon. Uh, <laughs> my apologies to Eric. <laughs> Both Eric's. Anyway, this is a French red wine, and it is a combination of a, I believe it's a Syrah and a Grenache, I believe. Uh, we're going to double check that, but this is what we're going to try tonight. And to go with it, I have uh, an interesting, now, most of these, the foods that I'm going to try, I should have really found some foods that, that really should have paired up well with this wine this doesn't pair up as well i don't think but uh i want to have some food here so we have some food and this is um if i can get a close-up of this this is a um well maybe we can't here we go there's a close-up uh i have a slice of pizza here from sam's club <laughs> some crackers and some uh mozzarella cheese some uh, greek olives with that are stuffed with uh, garlic and some beef summer sausage now yes definitely this is not the choice the first choice probably for pairing up with this wine this French wine but you know I want to have something on on hand and I the the things that I, I think would pair up with this wine uh, I really don't have on hand so I think the closest thing is going to be that beef summer sausage but we'll give it a try we'll, we'll see what happens uh, anyway it should be be fun. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, let me uh, get back on the first camera, uh, actually on this one. Um, I just want to say, first of all, that uh, if you are watching this, you can watch it, of course, on YouTube uh, and uh, Facebook. Uh, we have the Facebook chat open, and let's, let's see who's in the chat first. Chris is joining us in the chat. Hi, Chris. It's great to see you. And also Jeff, my good friend, my old friend Jeff, uh, he has joined us in the chat tonight. Jeff, it is really great to see you. Uh, I hope you all stay around, stick around, and watch me open up and pour and taste test this bottle of uh, Tandem wine and listen to me butcher the French language, uh, as I often do when I have a French wine, especially if I get fairly far down to the bottle. We're going to have some fun. We'll, we'll talk about some things. To be honest, I didn't really do a whole lot of prep on this. Uh, this is, of course, a stream of consciousness kind of show, and I do like to have a few notes to talk about uh, different things that I've thought about during the week that I thought, you know, it'd be fun to talk about on the stream. But uh, I didn't really get that far tonight. Uh, the, the time just caught up with me as I was prepping up for this. So uh, we're, it's, this is going to be a pure stream of consciousness kind of thing. <laughs> so it should be fun anyway. And especially if I get far down to this bottle... It, uh, it might be a lot more entertaining uh, <laughs> as we go along. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, if you're watching on YouTube, you can join us on the YouTube chat. I don't see anybody, I don't think there's anybody in the chat on YouTube. Usually I don't see too many people showing up in the chat, but, but we do have, uh, looks like we have a couple of people watching us, so, so that's, that's good. And, um, of course, you can catch us on um uh, let's see, Periscope, we're on Periscope here, although I don't have it going to, to Twitter tonight. Uh, still working on some of that. And you can, of course, watch us uh, live on drinkwithrick.com. Just go to the website, drinkwithrick.com, and you can watch the stream there. I don't think the chat's open there, but you can watch the stream anyway. And you can feel free to comment, because you can comment down in the notes below. So join us, join us there. 
And uh, of course, you can uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'll respond to, to any tweets on Twitter because I have Twitter open. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? The Facebook page. We're open on the Facebook page. I've got the Facebook page open, as a matter of fact. That's also Drink with Rick on our Facebook page. And Instagram. We're up on Instagram, although I, we're not streaming on Instagram, but you can, you can contact me there. I'm going to, before I go into opening this bottle of wine, uh, I, I just wanted to, to thank everybody for, for uh, supporting me and su for supporting the stream uh, over the last uh, four or five months we've been doing this. And, you know, of course, it just started off as sort of, uh, you know, just something fun I was doing for an evening. And it's turned out to be kind of a big production and we're getting bigger and bigger all the time it's really starting starting to i think take off and turn into something so um where this will go i don't know but uh i'm just having a lot of fun doing it just it's just a lot of fun and as long as it's fun i'm, I'm just going to keep doing it so anyway let's go ahead and <clears throat> open up this bottle of wine and of course uh to uh open it up and and drink out of it i've got my cooper's hawk Genuine crystal uh, glass from the Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida, where I went earlier this year uh, for uh, PodFest 2019. And I also have, uh, standing by, a bottle of water. This is our, this is my member's markup water, a member's mark water, I call it member's markup. And I, you know what? That's something I'd like to talk about later on, because uh, we went to Sam's Club this evening, and, and uh, we had a... Uh, that was an interesting experience. Anyway, to open this up, I have my wine cutter here. This is from this. Uh, this was part of the set that my wife Chi purchased for me, and we're going to open this up. And uh, with the cutter, and I think for some reason I keep losing. The stream cuts out a little bit over there, and I keep losing audio on the stream, so uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Hopefully, still doing it. There we go. Anyway, so let's go ahead and open this up. The way this works is I put this cork screw thingy up on the top. This is this is really cool. A cool device. Uh, I wish I had this years ago. Uh, you have no idea how many corkscrews I have gone through in my lifetime. Uh, and it's, I, I buy, I, you know, I buy one every once in a while and, and, and it goes in the drawer and I have a bunch of busted corkscrews in the, uh, in the, drawer, uh, the drawer. And uh, the, I think this was, this is a heavy duty item. If I break this, uh, I guess I am drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to pour this wine. I also have to pour this wine. I've got my Veneto. Uh, this is the, let me grab this here. This is from the Veneto Wine Lover set. And uh, I really, really like this aerator. So we're going to use this aerator. Give it a chance to breathe a little bit and maybe bring out a little more of the flavor of the wine. Let's see if I can give this a good little little pour. We're just going to pour a little bit in the glass for starters. Now I'm going to pour. I'm just pouring a little bit in the glass for starters, not just for the the swirl and the tasting, but also to make a little bit of room for the chiller. I'm going to put the wine chiller in in here shortly. So we're giving this a good uh, swirl. I'm going to give it a really good swirl. Okay. Now let's see what we can we can. Hmm. Little I I I smell a little bit of blackberry in there right away. And just a hint of cherry. Something else in there. Let me see, there's just a hint of maybe chocolate. 
Yeah, it could be. Could be a little bit of chocolate. Let's give it a little taste. Mm, interesting. Um, some mixed berries is what I'm tasting. Some mixed berries. It's a little more than cherry. I, I, I taste... Uh, Hmm. It's 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 a bit tannic. It's a bit tannic. Yeah, a little little hint of chocolate. Maybe there's something else. What is that? Um Slight, maybe slight hint of tobacco in there somewhere too, um, but that's it's. Let me pour just a little bit more of this, kind of get a good tasting, and then we're going to try the chiller in here. Yeah, uh, quite a bit of blackberry in there. Blackberry is kind of strong with that. And a little bit of cherry mixed. Um, okay, it's it's not bad. It's 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 quite dry. It is quite dry. Uh, I would say that it is um, not as tannic on the second taste as it was on the first. I think, although there there are some tannins in there. Uh, I want to say if maybe this is is not. It's a 2016, but it doesn't taste like it's really, really aged very long. It's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Not bad. Let's see what else we have on this wine. Just a minute. And before we do that, let's see who else we have. Anybody one else here in the chat and uh, YouTube? No, I don't expect much. But there are, we do have people watching. Uh, and, of course, Chris and Jeff, both in the chat. Say hi. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drink. And if you'd like to see me drink the whole bottle. Uh, okay, before we go too much farther with this, I am, as I said before, I'm going to switch this out. And we're going to put in... Uh, let's see. We're going to put in this wine chiller. And this is also part of the Veneto Wine Lover set. This uh, you, you kind of freeze this for an hour or so, put it in the freezer, and then we screw it onto the pourer here, and then we drop it into the bottle, and we give it some time. Now, I did this last, uh, was it last week? Week before. Tried it with another wine, but I had um, gone about a little over a third of the way into the bottle. You're not really supposed to do that. You're just going to, you're just supposed to pour about half a glass out so you can uh, compensate for the, the displacement when you put the, the rod in there. It displaces enough so it doesn't overflow the bottle. I had before I had forgotten to put it in there earlier, and I waited until I got about a third of the way down in the bottom of the bottle before I put it in. And by that time, the rod only goes about halfway to two-thirds of the way into the bottle. So it wasn't far enough down in there to really chill the wine uh so by the time i you know tried it, it it made a little bit cooler but not that much tonight i'm i'm leaving most of the bottle intact and we're going to try it again and see if this really chills the wine we'll give it a good we'll give it a good pour this time and it does does not kind of pours out very very slowly it's not Interesting. It's it's it, uh, I wonder if it's supposed to do it that. The stream's supposed to be that light. There we go. That's a little better. Maybe it was just the way I had it in there. There we go. Now it's coming out. Or probably it was just the way I had it situated in the bottle. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say it's about. Um, about 10 degrees cooler. It, it is a little cooler. 
And um, I did open this bottle at wine, uh, at wine, at room temperature. So, uh, yeah, you can tell it feels, the glass feels a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. And it's not bad. It's not bad. I, I think it works. It does work. I Now, it did sit up here while I was prepping for the show. It did, this thing did sit up here for about 15, 20 minutes. So it probably warmed up a little bit. It wasn't frozen, frozen when I put it in there, but it was, uh, it was cold enough. Still cold. So it's okay. I think the way you do this, you chill it. You're supposed to put it in the freezer, chill that rod for about an hour to two hours, and then take it out of the freezer and then put it in the wine bottle right away. You don't want to sit around and wait for 20 minutes like I did before you put put it in the bottle. But it's uh, it, it does seem to work. It does work. So I think we'll go with it. Uh, I'll say I'll say it's a winner. I'll say it's good. Uh, I'll say the wine is pretty good. It's it's not bad. This has a uh, kind of a dark. It, it's very full bodied. This is a full bodied wine. It's a uh, very deep red, as you can see here. But it's clear. I don't see. I really don't see any sediment to speak of. I don't see anything on the glass to speak of that's uh, sediment wine, uh, sediment uh, wise, and and on the wine. It does seem to have some legs. And let's see how much alcohol is in here by on the bottom. It says, it doesn't say actually. It doesn't say what the alcohol content is. Now that's interesting. This is the first bottle of, no, I take the back. It's on the front. It's on the front. You know, as a matter of fact, I didn't show you a, a, a close up of this. Let me get you a close up of this. This is the front of the bottle. And then uh, if we go, this is the, the back, and I'll just read what's on the back in case you can't see it. It says, uh, Eric Solomon Selections, each wine made by Gilles Trullier is sourced from a unique terroir in the Roussillon, Roussillon, and uh, I don't know, it's French, and re reflects the rugged landscape in this sunny and mountainous corner of southern France. And uh, <laughs> that was easier to read than that, that other bottle of wine I, I, I tried to read a few weeks ago that was all in French. Anyway, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun to listen to. <laughs> I went back and, and listened to some of it later, and I just cringed. I said, you know, I took a year of French in high school, and it's pretty clear that I didn't learn any French in high school. It's, it's pretty clear. So, uh, well, this, so this, this bottle of wine, uh, let me see what it's... I, I think this would probably... I don't think it's going to pair with anything well with, on my plate. It's definitely not the pizza. I don't think it's going to work well with the pizza. I think this will probably go okay with some... Maybe some grilled uh, meat. I think you could you could drink it with a burger. I think you could drink it with a, a decent steak. I think if you had a decent, uh, like a New York strip or, or maybe even a porterhouse or something like that, it would probably work well with that. Um, I think it would probably work well with lamb. Maybe maybe some smoked turkey I don't think so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't drink this with a with a white meat like a chicken or a pork or something like that I I, I really wouldn't uh, do that I don't think it works well with those but I think it would be okay with a, a grilled meat that's uh, maybe um, not it's not too I mean don't don't have it with a grilled hot dog or something I don't think it's gonna work well with that but I think it would go okay with a burger, maybe kind of a, a smoky burger. I think it would be okay with, um, yeah, there are some tannins in this wine. Um, I think it would be fine with a New York strip or a, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever you like to, to, maybe a ribeye or something, a, a good, good grilled ribeye I think would be okay with. Uh, 
Uh, this is not a, this is a French wine, and it would probably pair well with some, some decent rich French food, too. It would probably be okay with that. I don't, this would, I don't think this is a, a, a wine for anything like pasta or fish or anything like that. This is not that kind of wine. But I, I think it would go well with some of these. That's what I'm saying. I've got, I, I have this slice of pizza from Sam's Club. I don't know that I would really try it with that. I will try it with the... We'll try it with the beef summer sausage. I don't know if this is a sausage type of wine. May not be. I don't know. We'll see. It's okay. I'd stick with the ribeye. <clears throat> I would. And Chi has joined us in the chat. My beautiful wife, Chi. Hi, Chi. And uh, hope you're enjoying this. And uh, I appreciate I appreciate your, your letting me in here to do this tonight. I know that, um, see, I should be, I should be spending some more time with my wife this evening. And uh, maybe later on I can, I can, uh, maybe tomorrow <laughs> make it up to her, spend a little more time. But yeah, I actually did. We did, we did spend some time together. She and Tommy and I went to uh, Sam's Club. I got to tell you about that. But before I do, let's take a look at uh, birthdays. I want to say happy birthday because this is one of the things that I like to do on the wine stream is I like to toast birthdays, anniversaries, um, you know, Jeff, Jeff has a birthday coming up soon. You thought I forgot your birthday, didn't you, Jeff? No, I, I didn't forget your birthday. Um, you have a birthday coming up soon, uh, later on this month. And uh, you know what? I think maybe I'll do a special toast to Jeff on, 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 on your birthday. Maybe we'll do a special, special wine stream for that. Who knows? We'll see. I, I enjoy doing that. Anything that gives me an excuse to... to to uh, toast, uh, that's that's that works for me. Uh, let's see, birthday Stephanie. Stephanie has a birthday. Uh, her birthday is today, as a matter of fact, is her birthday. Now, Stephanie, she and I are childhood friends. We go way way back to to uh, childhood, uh, back when uh, we we went to the same church, and uh, back when we were we were kids. And her brother, uh, her brother Jack, her brother Jack. Was a dear is a dear friend of mine. It, it, I have not talked to Jack in years, but we're friends on Facebook, and it was great when I, I saw him on Facebook. When I first saw him on Facebook, I thought, "Wow, that, that's great to reconnect with him because it had I hadn't seen him since I was in my early teens and or my mid teens, and we were good friends there. And um, I always thought really highly of Jack, and uh, he just just a, a really cool. He was a cool guy. He was the cool guy that I wanted to be, <laughs> but really wasn't. I was always sort of the geeky guy, the, the kind of nerdy guy. Uh, Jack was Jack was the cool guy there, and and I always I always admired Jack because he was just kind of a you know, cool, laid back, uh, really really uh, really nice guy, and and, um, uh, and I I really. Um, would like to connect with him or actually uh, go visit him sometime soon one of these days uh, but it's hard to get around uh, you know uh, these days at my age now I'm 60 years old and uh, making long trips is is uh, is getting a little bit more difficult to do uh, Jeff Jeff and I worked together for for many many years at WFL in Orlando He's a dear friend of mine. He and uh, Pete Moltak and myself, we were the film department. And um, they, you know, I, I worked with these guys for, for, for 12 years and um, more like family, really, really. Everyone at 35 was really more like family. And Jeff and Pete, uh, we, we, had, we did a lot of great things together. We, we actually went into business together for a little while. Did Jeff? You, you remember? We we actually went to the software business. In fact, when uh, when we were let's see, back in the early '80s, and uh, 
Jeff and I had actually gotten into to uh, to the Commodore computers. I, I think he had. I think you had Atari there for a while, didn't you? And we'd go over to his his house, and he and his wife uh, Zita, we would go up to their house, and uh, we'd uh, uh, play video games on his on his uh, computer on his uh, console. And uh, back then, back in the day, the the games that were there were things like. Pong and you know uh, t- TV tennis things like that. There were a few other games that came along after that, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. That was what we did. And then uh, later on, I when I got my Commodore computers and Jeff got one too, and and we were uh, really getting into some of that. That we started, we came up with the idea to start our own little software company, uh, selling software, little retail company, mail order selling software that was before the internet so we were selling an all mail order and um we uh we did that for a little while that was interesting we went to a few we actually went to a few trade shows and uh did that in on the weekends uh, so we had our day job working at, at wfl and then we uh would go uh, to these trade you know i think we did two or three of those didn't we jeff uh, did two or three of those uh, on the weekends, and we'd sell the software there. Uh, kind of at those times, the trade shows were they were more like flea market events. And we'd set up a booth and we'd we'd sell software um, for the computers. But um, yeah, that was fun. It, we we did a lot of of uh, interesting things. <laughs> I miss our Friday afternoon lunches at 35. I'll say that, Jeff. We had a lot of a really, uh, really nice Friday afternoon lunches. Uh, I've got stories. I've got stories. I'll save them for another time, but uh, there are a lot of a lot of good stories. And um, I really, in, in a way, I, I miss those days um, because uh, we, we just, we, we actually had a, we had a pretty good time. I think we did. Um, a lot of good memories there. And of course, my uh, our friend Pete, who is no longer with us, uh, Pete Moltak was a was a great guy, and uh, just a just a, an awesome awesome friend, and uh, and I miss him terribly. Uh, I'm glad that that uh, that Jeff is still uh, with us, and 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 I'm glad that uh, to see Jeff here uh, tonight. And uh, I'm just uh, and you know Jeff, he's a very very talented. He does uh, some magic on the side. He's been doing that for for a long, long time. Ever since I've known him, uh, that was one of the things that that, uh, that he did, and uh, he's actually pretty pretty talented. He's pretty good at it, if I may say so myself. And uh, he's entertained us on, on more than one occasion. Uh, so I I want to say, uh, Jeff, here's to you because you have your birthday coming up. It's at the end of the month, but um, it's coming up. And I hope you're doing well. And um, my best to Zita. And uh, also, okay, Stephanie, I did not tell you yet, did I? I did not forget you about you, Stephanie. Here's to you. Happy birthday, Stephanie. I hope you and the family are doing well. That's for Stephanie. In fact, I started a toaster before. Let me give her a second one. Happy birthday, Stephanie. Jeff Glaze. We have another, um, I have another uh, WOFL alumni. Uh, Jeff, um, I'm going to toast him too because he has a birthday coming up very, very shortly. I think, I'd like to say it's later on this week, but um, I have to go back and check. But ha- happy birthday to you too, Jeff. And, um, uh, and she says, she says, hello, hon. I think she's talking to me, I think. And she says, happy birthday, Jeff. Anyway, so, um, oh, there's one other person. There's one other special person who's having a birthday later on this month that I must toast. Also, WFL alumni, I, I don't think he's watching tonight, but um, you might catch this later on. Mike. Pappy, Mike Papademus, I want to say um, another really cool guy. Uh, I, I'm going to say I worked with him for many, many years at WFL. Here's to you. Happy birthday. 
to Michael. And uh, really cool. He's uh, he's into blues, and uh, that uh, it kind of fits. That, that fits. He but uh, really cool guy. And um, uh, haven't seen him for years as well, but um, but I always enjoyed talking to him. And he was uh, and working with him. So uh, miss uh, miss these guys uh, from WFL. I. Uh, would also like to let's see. I think that's got it for birthdays for right now. Um, if anyone else is having a birthday coming up soon, let me know because I would definitely want to toast you too. I don't see any anniversaries coming up, but we do have some days of the week or, or some days of the year, I should say. I was looking this up earlier. Uh, August first was National Mahjong Day. National Raspberry Cream Pie Day, National Girlfriends Day, National Minority Donor Awareness Day, National Respect for Parents Day. You hear that, uh, TN Tommy? National Respect for Parents Day. Missed that. Hmm. Okay. Okay, now here's something that, uh, what's the first Thursday in August? That's, uh, let's see. First Thursday in August uh, was the 1st of August. So we missed it already, but that was National IPA Day. And if you like IPAs, if you're into IPAs, and uh, my boss and uh, my friend Danny, he, uh, he really likes IPAs. So I want to say uh, here's to, to National IPA Day. I do not have an IPA here. Um, I did not know that there was a national jet day just for IPA beer. Uh, I, I really, I really didn't know that. But um, I like beer. If I had known that, I probably would have brought up a beer and, and, or, and, and an IPA, in fact, and, and set it aside to try that. But you know, the beer and wine, I don't really mix too. And besides, this isn't. Well, it is drink with Rick, so it's the Saturday night wine stream, not the Saturday night beer stream. Although I think I'm going to go ahead and trademark that beer stream. Okay, let me TM. I'll work on that. But for right now, it's the Saturday night wine stream and uh, National IPA Day. Yes, I can get behind that. Okay, August second was which was uh, yesterday. National Water Balloon Day. That's the first Friday in August. Uh, okay, I, I don't have... Uh, that's not enough to drink to. National Coloring Book Day. Okay. National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. Okay, now that I can get behind because... Uh, and let's go ahead and pour for that. Because National Ice Cream Sandwich Day, that was for... for that was my favorite kind of ice cream an ice cream sandwich i loved ice cream sandwiches and i think i actually told you about uh, some stories about when i was in high school early days in high school all the all the way up to my last year of high school in fact um, i would almost every day almost every day i would have uh for dessert at lunch in my school lunch i would buy an ice cream sandwich I loved ice cream sandwiches. Now, sometimes I, I also bought the um, the ice cream bars, the chocolate covered uh, vanilla chocolate covered ice cream bars, and I think those were ten cents, and the ice cream sandwiches were fifteen. And I think sometimes if I didn't have fifteen cents, I'd buy the ice cream bar. But if I had the fifteen cents, I'd go for the uh, ice cream sandwich almost every time. I, I loved ice cream sandwiches, and I still do to this day. Uh, it's, it's just that I don't eat them as much anymore. My diet, uh, I'm, I'm trying to watch my diet here, so I, I, don't, I don't do that much anymore. It's, it's been a while since I've had an ice cream. In fact, I can tell you the last time I had an ice cream was uh, when I went up to uh, Blowing Rock, to Boone, uh, in Blowing Rock, North Carolina, earlier this year. <clears throat> for uh, we, we went up to visit... Uh, and I've told this story a few times. Uh, we went up to visit Appalachian State University for Tommy because he's interested in going to college there. And uh, Tommy and his friend Nick and 
uh, Chi and, and uh, Tia and myself went up there for the weekend. We toured Appalachian State University. We stuck around for free comic book day. And then Tommy and Nick um, recorded an episode of their Cube Command podcast there at Appalachian State University. And then Tommy and I recorded a, an episode of our Free Stuff Show podcast there. And they provided all the equipment for us. That was really cool of them. Uh, the, the library there, the, the uh, bookstore, I, I should say, sorry. Uh, the, the great folks at the bookstore uh, heard that we were coming and they set up. And we said, can we do a podcast in here for Free Comic Book Day? And they said, sure. And they set everything up for us. Set up a, uh, set up with a, a nice booth, a nice table, and even made... Uh, uh, signs and <clears throat> provided all of the the uh, equipment for us and everything. Uh, and uh, we we sat down. And we did the podcast. It was it was pretty awesome. The the, the people there were just just uh, uh, amazing. They really were. The the accommodations we had there. Anyway, we toured around uh, Blowing Rock and Boone. And of course, while we were at Boone, we we stopped and had the had uh, lunch at the Daniel Boone Inn, which is if you've never been up there to Boone, North Carolina. You must, you must, if you ever go up there, you must stop at the Daniel Boone Inn. It is just an awesome, it's it's like a family buffet kind of thing where they have a huge Lazy Susan thing there and they just bring the food over and, and uh, it's just, uh, it, it's an awesome, it's it's amazing uh, experience. The food is just excellent. But it is some down-home southern mountain cooking and it's just, uh, it's just great. Uh, you definitely don't leave hungry there. I'll say that. Uh, but we we went around Blowing Rock, and we, and we go up there. We go up there about once a year. It's not our first time. We we go up there once a year at least. Uh, we try to uh, a couple of times. We've been up there twice a year, um, just because we like the area so much, and we visit around. They have nice. Uh, they have uh, they have Blowing Rock breweries up there. They have a lot of wine. They're, they're a really, really big wine town. So they have wine tastings and festivals and things like that going on throughout the year. They, they have all kinds of stuff happening up there in, in uh, the Blowing Rock area. Um, where was it going with this? I don't know. Anyway. Um, oh, uh, ice cream. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, this year we went up there and I'd been on my diet because I was trying to stay off of the the uh, sugar and, and things like that. But uh, since we were there and we went to the ice cream shop there and I had to have an ice cream. I just had to have one because they have great ice cream. They have incredible fudge. They make the fudge right there. You can you can watch them make the fudge and uh, they make it fresh. And so you can you can watch them make the fudge by hand and then, and then um, purchase it. And they have the ice cream. They they had. Uh, uh, I I think I had the Superman ice cream is what I had. So it was it was good. And it's been a while since I've had it. So I said, "What the hey?" And I had some ice cream, and it was uh, it was really really good. And then I haven't had any ice cream since because I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to stick to my diet. All right, well, I'm not trying that hard because I, I did have a Girl Scout cookie the other day. You can't resist Girl Scout cookies, you know? I mean, there's just something about the cookies that are that are pretty good. Even though I have a thing about that. I, 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 I have my reservations reservations about that. I, I really want to support the Girl Scouts, but uh, as far as the Girl Scout cookies are concerned... I, you know, if, if, if the Girl Scouts made more off those cookies, I think I'd feel better about buying them, but uh, even on the diet. But the fact that I know that, the, that it, it's almost, to me, it almost seems like the cookie company is, is just exploiting the Girl Scouts to sell their cookies. I, I, because uh, from what I've heard, I don't think that Girl Scouts make that much on the cookies. Uh, I think it's the cookie companies that really, that really make the money. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of exploiting. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't like to see companies exploiting children that way just to sell products. Um, and now maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm all wet, but um, I love Girl Scout cookies. I mean, they're hard to resist. They really are. But um, I, and I and I like to think that I'm buying them because I'm helping the Scouts. 
I'm helping the Girl Scouts. I'm 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 I'm, I'm contributing to 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 doing something good for someone else, but uh, I'm just wondering how much I'm really helping the Scouts, and how much I'm really helping the 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 cookie company <laughs> that's, that's using the Girl Scouts to 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 uh, to sell their cookies. So I don't know. My my niece. Amanda, uh, my sister Gina's uh, daughter, youngest daughter, uh, my niece Amanda is is uh, a Girl Scout, and they've been selling the Girl Scout cookies. They're really big on this, so I, I don't want to talk badly about the the Girl Scouts. I, I really don't. Uh, let me check the chat again real quick, and uh, let's see. Uh, Gina's in the chat. Gina, it's great to see you. Um, and Me uh, Megan's in the chat. It's great to see you, Megan. Um, it's, it's wonderful to see to see all of you. Of course, Gina is my sister. Uh, Megan, I work with at uh, at work, and uh, these are they're both awesome people, and uh, they're they're uh, I'm, I'm just glad to see them here. And I hope you're. Tell me what you're drinking. Say hi. Tell me what you're drinking. Uh, tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you like to be drinking. It's my tagline now. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm drinking. This is uh, what we're doing tonight is we're doing tandem. This is a, a Gillies. A Gina, don't laugh because I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the uh, Gillies Trouillet uh, 2016 French red wine. It's a French red blend. It's, it's Syrah and um, a Grenache, I think. And I know you're not real big on Grenaches, Gina, but this is a... Um, uh, this is a blend that has the Syrah in there. It'll cut a little bit of the Grenache. It's got, um, I've picked out some uh, really strong on the blackberry, a little bit of cherry, strong on the blackberry, a little hint of chocolate. Um, I thought I tasted some tobacco early on. It, it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's a bit tannic, but uh, it's actually pretty decent. It's actually pretty decent wine. I'm going to actually have some more because I've drink, been drinking enough. I don't know if Megan would like to see me drink more. I know, like, I know you'd like to see me drink the whole bottle, Megan. And probably you too, Gina. Um, and um, Gina says, uh, can you change a water balloon into a wine balloon? You know, I'll bet you can. But um, I would like to see you try it first because, before I do because uh, that could be a very, very expensive balloon, wouldn't it? <laughs> Water, water is cheap, at least around here, uh, somewhat. And so it's easy to fill a water balloon, but to fill a wine balloon, oh, uh, yeah, that could get a little pricey real quick, wouldn't it? And uh, I know, Gina, I, I think I saw you posting uh, something where you were kicking back. You were drinking something earlier. What is it that you're drinking tonight, if you're still drinking it, if you haven't finished the bottle, that is? Uh, but you looked like you were relaxed, comfortable. Uh, the cat there and everything, so uh, um, um, it's good to see that, that you're relaxing. Uh, Chris has joined us in the chat. Great to see you, Chris. Say hi. Tell me what you're up to. I'm glad to see everybody. I'm glad to see all my friends here in the chat. Um, let's see. And, and, of course, Megan and I work with, and Chris, uh, yeah, it, it's it's been a while since I've, I've seen you, but it is Great to see you in the chat and stick around. We're going to drink and uh, tell me what you're you're drinking. If you're here to laugh at me, that's okay too. I know it's okay. It's a, this is all about fun, right? Um, I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled that Jeff is here. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm no. I'm thrilled that all of you are here. Look at this. I take it back. I'm thrilled that all of you are here watching this stream, and I do really, really appreciate that. But um, I, I don't want to um, embarrass anybody. <laughs> I don't want to uh, uh, let anybody think that I'm... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> and I'm getting far... You know what? I told myself I was going to let myself to half this bottle. But it's not even 12 yet. Uh, we're not even an hour into the stream, and usually I do the stream for 90 minutes. That's usually what my cutoff time is. And look at this. I'm nearly halfway through this bottle. 
I have been talking and drinking, drinking and talking, uh, mostly talking, but doing a lot of drinking, and uh, we're halfway down that bottle uh, already, so you never know. You might just see me finish this thing off. This is actually turning out to be a decent wine. Now, this was suggested to me by the ladies at uh, Wine Store, and I, I purchased this from Wine Store uh, in Blakeney in North Carolina. It's at winestore-online.com. And don't, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a shill for the company or anything like that. I really enjoy um, going there, uh, hanging out. I've gotten to know the people there a little bit. Uh, I think, I can't remember who suggested this to me. Uh, I think it was Trish over there at the wine store. The ladies there are, are excellent. They, they're they great. They know their wines. They're very, very nice people. Um, and I think, uh, let's see, what, and there's the receipt. I paid, and I forgot to go through this, didn't I? I paid... Um, Fourteen ninety nine for this bottle. Now I did a little bit of checking online, and this bottle of wine goes from anywhere from uh, fourteen or uh, fifteen dollars a bottle to about twenty dollars. I think I saw it somewhere at twenty four. Uh, I might be mistaken. Uh, twenty five ninety seven. Vivino had it uh, has it online for twenty five ninety seven. The twenty sixteen um, vintage for twenty five ninety seven. Um, I'm glad I didn't pay that much for it. Uh, I can't say that it, I don't know. That's a little pricey for me. Uh, Seller Tracker had it, has it for $14.52, so it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, let's see, who else has it? Uh, looking around. I think about fifteen dollars a bottle is about probably the average. Wine uh, wine store does have some of the best prices that I've found on wines, and, and and actually better pricing than excuse me than even uh, uh, than even the total wine, total wine and more, uh, as I affectionately call it, the total wino. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I just that's that's I I just like call it the total wino. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah their, their, their prices are really good, but I would have to say that uh, the wine, at wine store, I think their prices are a little bit better. You can, they'll ship to some states. I know because I've shipped some wine to my sister Gina uh, before. They'll ship to some states, not all states, but they will do some uh, interstate shipping. And um, you just have to check with them. And if you're thinking that, well, you know, if I ship, uh, the time that I buy that wine, if it's a little bit cheaper and uh, I have it shipped to me, uh, by the time I pay the shipping charges and all, it's going to be more than what I would, than what it would cost me if I purchased it locally. That may be true if you can get this wine locally. If you can get this wine locally at the same price, then you're okay. But if you can't, if you can't find it locally, then wine store is probably your best bet because if you purchase it online just about anywhere, it, you're going to wind up having to pay the shipping charges. And I think we talked about that in a, in a previous wine stream where I looked at some pricing. Uh, there was a, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the, the uh, online company, but they were... Uh, selling wines that you can buy pretty much anywhere in the local, you know, your local Publix or Harris Teeter or, or uh, whatever wherever it is you like to shop for, for food, your, your uh, supermarket or grocery store. They um, had a lot of those wines there, the same wines like the Barefoot wine and, and uh, I don't think they had the Rex Goliath, but they had some other ones there that um, were actually Three to four dollars more, and they were claiming that they were the best prices for. They had the best prices for wine online, but then I looked at their pricing, and it was like eight or nine dollars a bottle for a bottle of wine that I could pick up the local Harris Teeter, which Harris Teeter is not the best price for wine. The local supermarket they do have some uh, loss leaders, and they do have some specials going on, but they're not the lowest prices for wine, definitely. But I would go to the Harris Teeter. I could pick up that bottle of wine for five ninety nine, a bottle. Sometimes they would do specials where two for for ten dollars or five dollars a piece. 
but that was like four to five dollars cheaper than this this place online was selling the same wine plus you would have to pay the shipping and they would only give you a break they would only give you free shipping if you purchase six bottles or more and you can do that and in fact at the lo our local Harris Teeter here in Charlotte uh, the one I go to is the one in Stonecrest uh, they um, they'll give you a ten percent discount if you buy half a case. So if you buy you know pay five ninety nine for it and then you buy half a case and you get a ten percent discount, that's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying it. And, and there's no shipping charge either. So that's a heck of a lot cheaper than than this other store that uh, I can't remember their name, but uh, I would say as far as purchasing wine online, it's um, it's pretty tricky. It's pretty tricky. It's it's not um, just because it's online, uh, and I know there's a lot to be said for online uh, retailers. Look, I work for an online retailer, and uh, we do have some of the best prices on the retail products we sell. But uh, just because it's an online retailer doesn't automatically mean you're going to get the best price. And as a matter of fact, there's a story behind this. Um, Amazon, of course, purports to beat everybody's price on everything. That's really their thing. But uh, Tommy and uh, Chi and I went down to Best Buy earlier this evening, and he was pricing out some products that, that he was uh, looking to purchase. And it turns out, and, and actually, I was doing the same thing. Uh, UPS, I picked up a an APC... Uh, UPS, and for those who don't know what a UPS is, that's an uninterrupt, one more, here we go, if I'm going to wix my merch up, I've got to do it the right way, I picked up an, un an uninterruptible power supply, and uh, this was a 450 milliamp, or no, it was a volt amp, 450 volt amp, <laughs> 450 volt amp power supply, uh, and a, a backup power supply, let's say that, uh, for the computer that I'm using on this wine stream. And it was kind of an impulse buy. So we were in Best Buy. Tommy was picking up some things. I knew I was going there. I was going to need to purchase uh, a couple of things, but I, I opted for the uh, backup power supply instead because I was on a guilt trip. Because I, here I was... I knew I was going to be doing the wine stream tonight, and I was thinking to myself, I saw the power supply sitting there, and I thought to myself, I do not have an uninterruptible power supply, a backup power supply, battery backup, for the computer that I use to stream this show. Believe it or not, me, the old IT guy, did not have a battery backup. Now, I have it on my main computer, but I didn't have it on this one. So... I was thinking to myself, okay, this must be Providence because I'm walking by this thing, I see this thing. And I was on an instant guilt trip because I was thinking, you know what? All I need uh, all I need is to walk out of the store without buying this power supply and then get home and do this wine stream tonight and then poof, the power goes out. And right in the middle of the stream and I've lost everything. I'm recording the show, but I'd lose the recording. I'm streaming to Facebook and YouTube. I would lose that, whatever I had, and that would just completely blow the whole show, right? I wouldn't be able to do, I wouldn't have anything for the podcast later because I repurposed this into a podcast. It would just blow the whole thing. So I was on a guilt trip thinking that, okay, if I walk out of the store after seeing this and then the power goes out tonight, for whatever reason, uh, because we have Duke Energy and, and stuff like that happens. Um, <laughs> it's not a slam on Yes, it is. But uh, I would be just kicking myself. I would just be kicking myself in the rear. And um, that's not that's not, not fun, especially... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't... That would not be good. So... Um, I thought to myself, okay, I have to purchase this thing and take it home and set this thing up for the wine stream tonight. So that's what I did. 
but uh, where, where was it going with this? Hey, it's kicking in, isn't it? So anyway, uh, I, I remember now. So anyway, I was going to the um, checkout line. And as I usually do uh, as a tradition, I will check Amazon because Best Buy will price match Amazon as long as it is purchased, as long as it's Amazon Direct that's selling it. If it's from a third party, they won't uh, do it. But if it's Amazon directly that's selling the product, they'll price match, which is actually pretty cool. So I'm going up to the checkout and I am checking Amazon to see the pricing on this uh, APC uh, uninterruptible power supply. And it turns out that it's actually $10 more on Amazon. $10 more on Amazon than it is than it would be from me purchasing it from Best Buy. Um, which was the first time I've never seen that happen before. Usually I'll get it like a couple of dollars cheaper, sometimes maybe ten dollars cheaper if I'm uh, if I find it on Amazon a little bit cheaper and then I go up to the register and then and they say, yeah, we'll price match that and I'll save ten bucks. Um, but this time it was actually about nine to ten dollars more. And I understand why that is. I'm not going to get into that right now. But I, I, being in the retail industry, in the online retail industry, I understand why that was the case. Um, that, that, I'm not going to go into that right now. But um, I thought to myself, you know what? That is one instance where Amazon actually couldn't beat the price of the local retail store. So um, the the... Uh, the message here, the the more the moral here, <laughs> if there is one, is that just because it is online, and this is what I was getting to in the very beginning, just because it's on sold online, doesn't mean it's cheaper or any better than at a retail store. There are other reasons for buying online, and once again, this is coming from someone who does. Uh, who works for a company that sells things online. Now, once again, our company, uh, we do happen to have some of the best prices uh, online, uh, you know, rather than buying it in a, in a store. And I'm not going to get into that right now, but uh, uh, we do. But not every online store does that. This, the same thing is true for wine. In fact, uh, and that's really what I was getting to here. The point that I was making of it is that um, buying wine online is a completely different ball game. It really is. It's a completely different ball game. In fact, you can get ripped off online by buying the wine online instead of in the local store. So you really have to do your shopping carefully. Just because that you can, and of course, some in some states, if you live in a state where you can't purchase. Uh, wine online where they won't ship to your state because your state doesn't allow uh, interstate purchases um, you know of, of wine or alcoholic beverages online then it, this really doesn't apply to you anyway but if you're in a state that does uh, just don't just assume that just because that uh, that online wine store, uh, is telling you it has the best prices on the wine. Don't assume that they do because uh, a good deal of the time, in the case of wine, they really don't. Especially since wine is not cheap to ship. It's it's not cheap to ship, so it's not often that you're going to see or you're going to, to run into a company that sells, uh, that will sell you a bottle of wine uh, with free shipping. You're just not going to see that. Now you'll, you'll probably get it if you get maybe a case or maybe, maybe half a case. But if you're buying a bottle or two, <clears throat> you're really not going to see a lot of free shipping online. So by the time the shipping charges kick in to that bottle that you've purchased online, if it is cheaper than your local supermarket, um, a good deal, deal of the time, you're actually better off just buying it from your local supermarket or from a local uh, wine place like a, like a Total Wine or a wine store or something like that. So that's just, that's just something to, to note. And I know I re went really, really long on this, but 
uh, it's something that I, I thought was important to share that if you're into wine and you're thinking about buying wine online, especially from some of these wine clubs, you want to be extremely careful. And I'm not saying, I'm not dissing the wine clubs. I mean, there, there's some of them that are pretty good, a couple that I'd like to join, but um, you want to be extremely careful and shop around before uh, before investing in that sort of thing because that's really what you're doing is, is you're investing in those. You're not just shopping around. You're, you're really investing yourself into those online wine shops. Let's see who else we have in the chat right now. Uh, of course, I've already said hi to Megan and Chris. Uh, Ed has joined us. Ed, it's great to see you. I'm glad to see you in the chat. I hope you're drinking something. I'm, I'm, um, let me know what you're drinking. Say hi. Tell me what you're doing. And Dee has joined us in the chat. Dee, it's great to see you too. Dee is another, um, um, is, is someone else that, that, um, that I've worked with a long, long time ago. And uh, it's, it's great to see all of you here. In fact, if, uh, Ed and both Ed and Dee, different places, but they are both... Uh, people that I've worked with for for uh, many many years, and uh, in in different places, uh, Ed at Disney. Uh, Ed is someone that I worked with at uh, at, at when I worked at uh, the Walt Disney World Village when it was called the Walt Disney World Village back when in the day, and yes, I've worked in a, a number of places. I've 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 done a few things in my life. Uh, you know, I, I worked at Disney, uh, uh, for, uh, you know, Walt Disney World uh, for a number of years. I worked at Channel 35 for a number of years. And uh, in fact, there was a period of time when I did both uh, full-time. I worked two full-time jobs. And I would tell you, I would not recommend that to anybody, but it was exhausting, especially because I would commute to both. And I would drive back and forth to Disney. And, and for those of you who don't know the layout of uh, out there in Florida, um, uh, in the in the early days, Channel Thirty Five was was located on Ar uh, South Orange, or actually North Orange Blossom Trail. Uh, there, we were north, we were south on the trail, but on the north side. Um, and uh, Disney was out <laughs> was way out there. <laughs> It was a bit of a drive, and uh, I used to work full time at both jobs. I did that for about a year, and it was probably the worst year that I think I've. I I, I, I was thinking to myself, why on earth was I doing this? But I, I did it. The money was good because I was doing two full time, 40, 40 hours a week on each job. Did that for about a year, and then I couldn't take anymore. I had to quit Disney, um, but it was it was just it was excruciating. I would get like two to three hours of sleep at night. Um, sometimes I would be sleeping uh, on my off time at, at Disney in the in the employee break room. Uh, I would just sack out there in the employee break room. I didn't even go home. There were there were um, times when there was a period of time when I. Just commuted. That's all I did was commute back and forth between Disney and uh, the station. Disney and 35. Disney and 35. And I would sleep. And, and I, would, I would just basically camp out in the employee cafeteria at Disney when I wasn't there before I'd have to start my shift at 35. And I would get like two or three hours. I'd get a cat nap here and a cat nap here, uh, there. And um, it was It was rough. It was pretty rough. Don't ask me why I did it. I did it because, well, okay. I did it because, for one thing, um, the benefits at Disney were good. Uh, at the time, Channel 25 was still an independent station. We didn't really have a whole lot of benefits. So the benefits at Disney were really, really good. Um, but the... Um, but Channel 35, television was really, that was really what I wanted to do. I wanted to do more in broadcasting. So I wanted to stick with that. I, I had um, acquired that job. I, I got that job. It was a long fought uh, job, and it was something that I really wanted to do, and I wanted to hold on to it. And uh, it, it was it was kind of tough for a while. But when I quit Disney and uh, went full, you know, I was, I just stayed with 35 after that. 
it was quite it was quite a relief <laughs> because uh, for me physically and and a little bit mentally because um, I just I just realized why had I tortured myself for a year doing that I I I know that the the folks the people I worked for at 35 appreciated me for that uh, the people at Disney they didn't care. They didn't care. I was just one more warm body there, which is one reason. I, another reason why I quit Disney. It was just I was just another warm body, and um, it was um, the, it, it was not a um, tough decision to make <laughs> when I finally quit. It was just very very difficult to give up the benefits because the benefits were actually pretty good at the time. So uh, once I got used to that, then and, and and when I went full, when I was at full time at thirty five, after we we were um, we uh, were purchased by Meredith, and and um, uh, I got more, I acquired more benefits from there. Then it was it was all good. It was it was fine, but um, it was a little rough in the early days. It really was. Anyway, let me tell a little more of this. So, uh, what was that? Oh, yeah, I, uh, I missed my notes. Okay, so I was going to tell you what happened at, uh, at Sam's Club. Now, at Sam's Club, I, I want to give kudos to the people at Sam's Club. Now, this, this pizza, I'm not going to eat this pizza now because it's just way too cold. It's been sitting out for more than an hour, so I'm not going to eat it. But we went to Sam's Club this evening, and we went there for a couple of things. One, we, we, we picked up some bottled water and things like that, and we did a little shopping. And Tommy was looking for a chair uh, to replace it. His, his uh, chair was, uh, was broken to, uh, in front of his computer, his computer chair. So he, he was looking for a new one. And I went there for the bottled water. <laughs> But, um, and the chair, because I thought if he found a nice chair, I could find a good deal on the chair, too, which I didn't. But uh, while we were there, uh, we decided, well, we were hungry, we we're going to purchase dinner. While, while we're there, why don't we just go ahead and get dinner? So we thought, well, why don't we just get a, uh, pick up a, uh, a pizza from Sam's Club? Now, if, if, you're, if you're a Sam's Club shopper, you know what I'm talking about. The pizza's pretty good. I mean, come on. There, there's a lot of cheesy things about... <laughs> pardon the pun. There are a lot of cheesy things about Sam's Club, but one thing that you can't complain about is a pizza. Pizza's actually pretty good, and they load it down with the cheese, don't they? I mean, they really do. The, the, the pizza at Sam's Club is a really cheesy pizza. I mean, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of cheese on it, and I love a pizza with a lot of cheese. And uh, it's not like you're buying, a, you know, a, a frozen tombstone pizza or something like that. It's 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 actually pretty good fresh pizza. So we decided we were going to purchase one. We went up there uh, to the kiosk because now they have kiosks. It used to be that you just go up there to the counter and order your your food or whatever. But now they have key, at least the one that we have, the, the Sam's Club in our area. They have all these kiosks. And so you order from the kiosk, and then you go pick up your food. Well, went to the kiosk, and it turns out that apparently it had been a very busy day, so they were pretty much out of food. And I want to order a whole pizza. Now, they still had some slices there, but I want to order a whole cheese pizza, and I couldn't because they said it was out. And so I thought, well... Are they really out of pizza because they're still serving some up front. So I walked up to the counter and I asked the lady, I said, um, I really wanted a whole pizza. And she said, well, actually, we only have about five pizzas left and uh, to, to, to make. We only have about enough to make five pizzas with. And th that's really what we're doing is for the slices. I said, well, we really need a pizza for dinner. I wanted a whole pizza. Can you think maybe you can make one of those as a whole pizza? And she says, you know what? I'll do that for you. I'll make you a whole pizza. She says, I'll tell you what to do. You go up to the kiosk and order four slices. I know it's from you. Order four slices of the pizza. and Because that's about the equivalent of what the pizza would cost. About eight bucks. And I'll make you a whole pizza 
And I thought, okay, this is great. I appreciate it. Thank you. So that's what I did. I went up there to the kiosk, ordered four slices of pizza, came back in, and and and, and she says, okay, I'm st I'll, I'll make your pizza. So she made me a whole pizza. And uh, when I went to pick it up, now look, I have my, I have my beef with Sam's Club and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> That's another pun, but I'm not even going there. Um, but uh, one thing that I, I really, really appreciated was that she went the extra mile for me. And I don't even know her name, but she went the extra mile for me. She personally attended to making that whole pizza for me when she didn't have to do it. And when she gave me the pizza, she grabbed an extra piece off the counter or off where they had the, the slices, I should say. And she threw that in because she said, you know, when I when this pizza came out, I looked at this pizza and there was one slice there that had almost no cheese on it. And the, the way that cheese had, had melted on there, there was one section, uh, a whole, basically a section of that equivalent, that was equivalent to one slice that had, there was basically no cheese on it. She says, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give you this extra slice because to make up for that. But the, the fact that there was no cheese on that on that one slice of pizza on on your whole pizza, um, and I I, I, I said thanks, and it, uh, that really the thing is though that really that really hit me. I was really um, impressed by that. I really was, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have been to a lot of places, and of course Walmart. In fact, if you go back a few uh, wine streams back, I I did a whole rant about about Walmart and my experience that that she and I had at Walmart, where we just had customer no service at all. It was just basically it was it was just a, a horrible experience, and um, I, I was really really disappointed with the way the people at Walmart handled. Um, uh, handled things and uh, th this lady at Sam's Club which of course you know Walmart owns Sam's Club uh, this lady at Walmart really redeemed that for me I'm, and I, I don't want to say I'm, I'm not really so much for Walmart but, but Sam's Club um, she made my day she just absolutely made my day. That little extra customer service because she took some personal attention to making that pizza when she really didn't have to do it. She did not have to do that. It was the end of the day. This was like 8 o'clock at night. And they were out of a lot of the food. And there wasn't much going on. She didn't have to do any of this. She didn't have to do any of it. But she took it upon herself to take a personal uh, to take some personal attentiveness to this and um, to, to really uh, take care of me. I mean, she really did. And I was really touched by that. I thought, you know, this, this is real customer service. And she, she made this pizza, and then she looked at the pizza when she was going to give me the pizza. She didn't have to do any of this. She didn't have to make me a whole pizza. She could have just easily said, well, we're out of the whole pizzas. We're not going to do that. But she didn't do that. She said, yeah, I'll make you a pizza. You know? And she told me how to go about doing it so that, that, that we could get one. And then when the pizza was made, she looked at the pizza and said, you know what? This pizza is not up to my standards, my personal standards. This is her talking. I mean, she's, she's saying to herself, this pizza is not up to my personal standards as to what the pizza should be. So I'm going to give him an extra slice of pizza to make up for that. Um, that really, really impressed me. So this is an example of, that's an example of the way customer service should be. And because of that, that really renewed my faith in Sam's Club. And just, just her, that act, that she, her act was something that, that uh, I'll have to say, you know, I want to toast her. I don't know her name. I really don't. I, I don't know if I'll ever see her again there the next time I walk into the Sam's Club. But I want to say Sam's, uh, our local Sam's Club, and uh, that this is the one at, uh, at across from the Carolina Mall 
in Charlotte, in South Charlotte, okay, in the Pineville area. If anybody from Sam's Club is watching this or happens to catch this later, you should give that lady a raise. <laughs> you should hold on to, to that, to that uh, customer, uh, this customer, excuse me. You should hold on to that employee. Yeah, it's online kicking in, I don't know. Hold on to that employee because she is somebody that, that, that's worth more than gold worth more than her weight in gold that's that's customer service and that's somebody that gets you a customer for life just be a simple act like that uh and here's to you i don't know your name but here's to you thank you very much the pizza was excellent uh but even if it wasn't uh first rate even if it was just okay I'd say your customer service more than made up for it. And I thank you very, very much. I, I just want to say that. And this should be a lesson to every company that, uh, you know, that, that's really striving for, uh, to, to really win the, the hearts and minds and the wallets of their customers. If you want to win the hearts, minds, and wallets of your customers, Put out exemplary customer service like that. Strive to train your employees to and, and choose your employees, choose the employees that are going to deliver exemplary customer service like that. Because that, that's worth more. I'm going to give you a flip side of this. I gave you a great example of this, and, and I really didn't intend to do this tonight, but I'm, I'm going to do this now because it, it just brings up a whole whole thing about customer service, about customer loyalty. And I'm going to have some more wine. In fact, you know what? I should have a little bit of this water because the water is here so that I don't get wine headaches. There's a rule, basically my rule. Have a little bit between each glass of wine. I know I've had a couple of glasses of wine. Between each glass of wine, have a glass of water. That'll prevent you from having wine headaches. It'll keep you head, uh, headaches. It'll keep you hydrated, uh, and it'll prevent the wine headaches and, uh, and and other issues in the morning. I know I'm going to feel this in the morning. Come on, <laughs> I'm down to what is it? Uh, it's more than half half of the bottle. Uh, come on, um, I'm. I'm I'm uh, more than uh, halfway down. I'm almost uh, almost two thirds of the way down this bottle, and it's actually a pretty decent wine. I'll say I'll recommend this wine. It's and once again, it's not a wine that you want to drink with uh, uh, with certain foods. I, I think I don't think it was great for. Uh, I don't. You know what? I'm going to try. Let's try it with this. I love garlic stuffed olives. I can tell you right now, this Greek food is not going to go well with this red, uh, French wine. And it doesn't. There you go. But, hey, this is entertainment, right? <laughs> so... Anyway, the um, the tandem wine I think is a is a decent wine, going for about fifteen dollars a bottle, and I paid fifteen dollars a bottle for it from wine store to, uh, wine store dash online dot com. I bought a few. I have this receipt here, by the way. I bought a few other bottles of wine too, and uh, I'll tell you a couple of them. I have. Um, a couple of them I have. I'm going to show you a little bit closer shot of this. You can't really see it, what's written on here, but I'm going to read it to you. This is what I bought this week at the wine store. Okay, I bought the uh, Cantin Povero Dolcetto. That's we've actually. Where is it? The Mont uh, the Montferro Dolcetto. Excuse me. The wine is kicking in, and it is. Uh, we did that at the wine stream last week. I really enjoyed that wine. 
Go back and watch that wine stream last week. That was that was fun. I enjoyed that wine so much that I bought another. I want to buy another bottle of it. And let me tell you something. At eight dollars ninety nine cents for that bottle of wine, that is that was uh, was was well worth it. Um, I might pick up a couple more bottles of that. It was definitely worth it. Eight ninety nine a bottle. I think they got a special buy on this. So I don't know that it's going to last for a while, but if you, if you're really interested in this wine, if you saw last week's wine stream and you're interested in this wine, buy it from the wine store, winestore-online.com. Uh, it's a great price for that wine. I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of it for very long. Uh, not if I go down there and buy another half case of it or something, if I can afford it. Uh, the other thing I bought on here was the Scarpetta Frico Russo, uh, Rosso, and I've had that. That's uh, ten dollars a bottle. Uh, we tried that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's right there. Uh, sometime back, and that one goes great with pasta. By the way, that one is a one that goes great with a pasta. It goes well with a lasagna. It goes well with spaghetti with a uh, meat and uh, sauce. Um, I highly recommend the Frico Rosso. Overbrook Cabernet, we have not tried this, and I do I even have that here? It's downstairs. It's downstairs in my in my wine uh, cooler. Uh, we may over we may uh, open that in a future wine stream. I had a slight tasting of that. I I thought it was really really interesting, so we might try that. But this one the uh, and that was like thirteen dollars a bottle. This one was fourteen ninety nine a bottle, fifteen dollars a bottle, the tandem. And um, I would, I have to say, I probably, I'd probably buy another bottle of this. I was a little skeptical when, when uh, I went there, and and I and I said, I was specifically went there saying, you know, I need something to test on the, I need something to open on the wine stream next week. And uh, I think it was Trish, and she said, uh, why don't you try the tandem? This would be a good choice to to open on your wine stream. And um, and I thought at the time I thought well uh, yeah I might try that but then I saw the there were a couple other wines there was the uh, the Hecula and I thought well I'll, I bought I need to buy a bottle of that instead so I bought a bottle of that instead and uh, then I said well I'll come back and get the tandem later <clears throat> and uh, and the tandem I was. I, I should have done this before. I really should have, uh, because I, I think this is actually definitely well worth worth the price. I think I can't remember what I spent uh, on the Hecula, but I think, I think it was like twenty. I want to say it was like twenty something dollars a bottle, but it was um, <clears throat> it was. Uh, I, and I haven't opened that one yet. We're going to open that in, in a future wine stream, but. Uh, the uh, the tandem I, I should have opened this one earlier. I should have bought one of these earlier. But when I was there Thursday and I was tasting out a few other bottles of wine, uh, I was doing they were doing another wine tasting and I I saw it on the shelf and I said you know maybe I'll buy this one this week. So I I went ahead and did it, and of course the rest is history, which is going to be history pretty soon when I finish this bottle. Actually, pretty decent wine. Um, I'm, this is not. I would rate this on on the on the list of wines that I've tried. It's probably up there with the. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to say it's up there with the Domaine de Genas and the Brick Mason, and uh, maybe the Tessalay. I would have to say it's kind of probably on on par with some of those. And if you're you're wondering about those, you can go back and look at those other wine streams because uh, we, we did open every bottle back there. Every single bottle back there is one that I've opened up on a wine stream. This is our 21st wine stream. And uh, as of tonight, I've opened 21 bottles. <clears throat> and I have, um, I have drunk every single bottle on that shelf. And um, you know, when I look back, that's that's a lot of wine. <laughs> that's a lot of wine. 
but I've done that over the course of what four months when I started doing this I started doing this back in uh, the week I, I did this the week before I went to the podfest uh, the 2019 podfest in Orlando uh, that was uh, March 7th through the 9th I believe so the week before that the first weekend in March I think was the uh, the week that I first tried it and I tried it with the Tradition, that was the Target wine, the Target Tradition wine. So, and this is in order, by the way. This is in order, except for one bottle. The uh, Finca Museum, which I do not have a bottle. I was not able to save the bottle. Well, I was able to, but I forgot and, and accidentally threw it away. So I do not have a bottle for the Finca Museum wine, but I do have the box. I do have the original box that the uh, case came in, the half case six bottles of wine so I keep that up there on the shelf for posterity so uh, with that there are 21 bottles of, of wine uh, up on this top shelf and uh, that's a lot of wine we're gonna have a little more so uh, I was gonna go somewhere else with this I can't remember what it was now. Lost my train of thought. And we're getting close to it's twelve thirty now. It's and it's about time to close up the stream. If anybody's still there and still watching me, <laughs> I would say kudos to you. I'm going to drink to you because uh, if you're if you're sitting through an hour and a half of this and you're still watching this, uh, I want to say thank you, thank you very much. And why are you still watching me? <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. But uh, this is good wine. And I hate to hit the stop button, but I think it's about time to do this. We start at 11, it's 12.34. So yeah, it's, it's time to, to end the stream for the night. I hate to do this because for a couple of reasons. One, because, uh, yeah, I'm having a good time doing this. The other reason is because I see all my friends here, all my friends here in the stream tonight, um, you know, uh, uh, Chris and Jeff and Gina, Megan, uh, Ed, D, all, you know, all my, all my friends. And this is, uh, you know, I, I, I I, I work all week, and then I come home, and I look forward to doing this wine stream, not just because I want to open up a bottle of wine and drink wine. Yeah, that's, that's part of it, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's always fun to open up a bottle of wine and drink wine. But mainly because I'm connecting with my friends, my family, my relatives, my friends, and uh, making new friends. For those who are watching, I haven't checked... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, on, on, um, and uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I, I missed the um, the lunch. I missed the comments on on YouTube, and I apologize for that. I really apologize for that. But Nigel's uh, in here in the, in the chat on YouTube. Uh, Nigel says, "Hey, man," and I and I say, "Hey, Nigel. It's good good to see you in the chat." And uh, Arian. Arian wants to know, what did you do at Disney? That's a good question. Boy, that, that wine stream can go on for two two more hours. Uh, but Arian, uh, I want to say uh, thanks for joining us in the chat. Uh, great to see you and appreciate it. Um, what I did is did Disney, real quick, is that I did... Um, I worked... Uh, I worked a number of things. I, I, I wore a number of hats there. Mostly I was hired initially for working in the Walt, what was at the time the Walt Disney World Village. Uh, what well, they called it originally the Lake Buena Vista Village. It was in Lake Buena Vista. And I was working, I was purchased, uh, excuse me, I purchased. I was hired. <laughs> it's not way sometimes. I was hired for uh, working in uh, food service and uh, uh, serving food to the customer. And my very first job at Disney was scooping ice cream, scooping ice cream at the Borden Ice Cream Shop on Main Street at Walt Disney World. Did that for the first week, and then after that, they moved me over to um, Lake Buena Vista, which later became the Walt Disney World Village, 
which later became the Disney Marketplace, and I don't know what they call it now, but it's changed names so many times. Uh, but I, I moved there. I moved to the Borden Ice Cream Shop in the Walt Disney World Village, and they had uh, built a, a kind of a, a multi. Uh, there was one. It was one building, but there were several things going on in that building. There was the Borden Ice Cream Shop, and then there was the Veranda Restaurant, and then there was the Sara Lee Bakery. And uh, I started off scooping ice cream. And I tell you what, the, the first week that I worked at Disney, the first two weeks that I worked with Disney, I went home and I was exhausted because I, we're not talking about scooping ice cream for a few people. We're not talking about scooping ice cream for about 100 customers that come in, you know, the local ice cream shop every day. We're talking, this is the Disney World. This is where we're talking about 20,000, 30,000 people at Disney World all lined up waiting for a, an ice cream cone. And I scooped thousands of ice cream cones. I, I scooped hundreds, a thousand ice cream cones every day. And the first two weeks that I worked there, uh, when I got home, I reeked of ice cream. I'd have to take a shower because it was all over me. And... When I would close my eyes and go to sleep at night, as soon as I closed my eyes, that's all I saw. Just scooping ice cream. I would dream about scooping ice cream. At the first two weeks I worked there, it was just, all my dreams were just, I'm doing this. <laughs> that was all I, that's all I did. And it, it, it was, it was just, it was, it was awful. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. It was just. It was rough. It was not my idea of, of what I had fantasized about working for Disney. I thought, well, I was gonna well, work for Disney, the happiest place on earth. I'm gonna be, you know. Um, but no, I was stuck here scooping ice cream for eight hours a day for for two weeks, and it, for the first two weeks, and that was all I did. I was so sick of ice cream. I could not eat ice cream. I could not eat ice cream. For I don't know, it was like two or three years. I I went two or three years where I could not even look at ice cream. I I couldn't look at it. I was so sick of it, so sick of ice cream. And uh, and I did that for a while, and then I uh, moved into uh, I did a lot of other things. I became a lead there, and and I was. Uh, managing the uh, ice cream shop and the bakery. So I would run back and forth between the ice cream shop and the Shirley Bakery and, and, and do that. I was, I was a lead there for a while. And then I was uh, uh, I took over the pizza delivery service there, uh, what they call pizza time. That was fun. I really enjoyed that part. That was, that was a lot of fun. It was stressful because it was a one-man operation, making pizzas and delivering them to the uh, uh, Buena Vista, uh, uh, the, the, the resorts and the tree houses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I did that. I left that and went to a place called the Light Bite, which was at the time, this was in the Disney Village also. The Light Bite was a burger joint where we sold burgers and hot dogs and, and stuff like that. And uh, did that for a while, but I did a lot of other things in between. I, I worked at when Epcot. I watched Epcot being built. So Epcot was being built, and then when Epcot opened up, uh, I worked at Epcot for a little bit. I, I worked in the German Pavilion a little bit, in the French Pavilion, and and uh, several other places. But I also uh, did a lot of other things. I did a lot of banquets. Uh, did a lot of. Uh, I did various other things there on site. Uh, just uh, a lot of the the um, special events that they did. I would work a lot of the events outdoors and and uh, uh, driving golf carts around, driving uh, uh, people back and forth to their cars and things like that. I did a lot of a lot of different things. So I I got a lot of experience there. I met uh, I met a few people there. I met a few celebrities there. Uh, I, I got to, to serve some celebrities there uh, and, and, and just uh, and, and got to meet a lot of nice nice people, got to meet a lot of interesting people, got to meet a few weird people. 
I'm not even going there. But uh, a lot of had a lot of weird experiences there working at Disney. Did that for nine years, but that was pretty much my Disney, my Disney experience. And that was uh, you know, and and uh, I could tell you some more stories, but I'm not going to even do that right now. Uh, hopefully that answered your uh, your question, Arian. Um, anyway, so it's about time to wrap this up, and I went long as I often do because I like to talk. Love to talk. That's why I do this, right? But I like to drink, too. And that's why I do this. Once again, I want to thank everybody for sticking out with me tonight and for being here to drink with me. Um, I really appreciate all of you. Um, I look, and once again, I look forward to doing this every Saturday night. Not just because I can open up a bottle of wine and, and drink it and try it out and eat a little bit of food, which is right now is getting really, really cold. Uh, but because I can hang out with you and just talk about stuff and, and just chat. And, and I appreciate everyone who's, who's, who's contributed in the chat. Gina, do you, do you test out the wine balloon for me? <laughs> test that out. Uh, I don't have the... I don't uh, I don't make that kind of money where I can put wine in water balloons, but that's a very interesting idea. It really is. Uh, but once again, I want to say thank you to everybody who who watches this. I do appreciate all of you, and uh, I hope to see you next week again, and we can all get together. Uh, drink together and just uh, share stories. Share some of your stories with me. Uh, I want to know what you're doing. I want to know what you're up to. Anyways, it's time to close it uh, down. And I would say that uh, this is always the saddest part. I'm not going to sing a song or or or, or uh, that sort of thing to, to close it out. But uh, <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are as old as I am, uh, it goes back to the old Carol Burnett show. But anyway, uh, I want to say thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it's been a great time. Uh, I hope we can do it all again next week. Next week, uh, maybe we'll open the Hecula. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Or maybe find something else. Maybe I'll go to the wine store and, and find something else. Or one of the other wine stores around here. Uh, but in any case, uh, we'll we'll do it again next week, and uh, I hope to see you here with me, and we can all get together on the Saturday Night Wine Stream and drink with Rick. Good night.